I'm back again with another Sliger build. This time full ATX and something slightly larger than a lunchbox, but not really. Be steel, my beating heart. So Rosie is our video capture rolly cart. It's really super handy having a monitor and a mixing board and everything on a rolly cart, but we need to slim down. Like it's kind of bulky and there's a lot of wires and it's not really, not really that great. Enter the Gigabyte Designator. This is a Z390. We got the 9900KS in here. It's got onboard Thunderbolt, which is great for capture. It's a higher end capture. And it also has really good onboard USB and also Wi-Fi 6. So, at least with the setup that uh, I've done here. So, yeah, there's not <laughs> not much more you could want. I mean, we've got two PCI Express by one slots and three physical X16 slots, which is by four by eight by eight. If we use the onboard iGPU, I can get three reasonable capture cards in here. I could break out the M.2, go that route and get even more capture, but we've only got the one good Magewell card. So that Magewell card, that's an X4. Probably gonna go in the bottom slot. We'll see how that performs. The DMI, chipset DMI might be a little bit of an issue, but we also have the Epifan 4K capture. So this rig is shaping up to be uh, to be quite a quite a nice build. And we've got room like for a full-size GPU. It will fit. I mean, some of the, the giant honking GPUs, no, but like here is our EVGA 1080 SC super clocked. It's a pretty big card. We have like five millimeters of clearance, give or take, between our NZXT Kraken X62, you know, all in one closed loop cooler, which is necessary for five gigahertz on 14 nanometer. I mean, let's let's be real. And, uh, you know, and the GPU. So, and one of the things that Sliger's known for is customization. So they've really put a lot of thought into how you can customize the case. So there's, there's a pretty big cutout here over the motherboard. This one is the one if you're gonna mount the power supply inside the case somewhere, you can mount it vertically where I've got the radiator mounted. And you've also got the, uh, the punch outs for a custom loop cooler. So if you wanted to have your tank and reservoir or even your radiator located somewhere externally, you could totally do that with this setup. You know, you can have an external rad somewhere if you really wanted to. So you could use this bracket, for example, to mount your SFX power supply internally in the case. And then, you know, you would be able to use your SFX case, your SFX power supply completely internally. And it comes with the extension cable to go from there to, to here, depending on where you actually end up mounting your SFX power supply. If you wanna cram a standard sized ATX power supply, you can, but since you can get standard SFX power supplies up to you know 750, 850 watts, that's gonna be enough to cover builds. My initial plan for this was to stuff a 32 core Threadripper in here but then it's like, well, I want to do a custom loop and well, there's some other options. And this does support XL ATX. So those extra long motherboards would work in here, especially with the radiator mounted in the front. You're just not going to have super deep cars. But where we're using this for a rosy upgrade, maybe, maybe a future build. You've also got this option for the rear plate, which will let you just mount your SFX power supply directly right there. And this is what we're going to use. There are also other options. So if you want a vibration dampened three and a half inch drive mount that you actually set up in the bottom of the case or in the top of the case, you've also got options for that. Now, even though this computer's slightly bigger than a lunchbox, a little bigger than our old build, we will be mounting this in the top. Which will give us mount points for our handle. So yeah have another handle on this machine in case we need it to be portable. Strictly speaking, you don't need a handle on Rosie, but you never know. With the top handle set up, there's not really enough room for a fan. I mean, if it was a slimline fan, maybe, but there's not really enough room. Now with this build, we've got a ton of room for activities. It's crazy how much room we have on the inside. I mean, check that out. If we're gonna put giant full length cards in there, if I was gonna do a custom, custom loop, really pretty much anything. I'm I'm probably gonna need to add a few more fans to this build, but I just wanna do a quickie burning test with a SATA drive and see how that goes before I add the capture cards. Now, don't worry, in terms of the rear IO, these come with a full kit for full coverage at the rear. So you get steel, steel, like you can't bend them, steel slide covers and a cover here to make it a little easier to uh, install your devices. 
So you really should check out the Sliger website. There's a ton of options, a ton of customizations. I mean, there's a million different possible combinations in a build like this. And yeah, we've got the perforated top with the fan and the option for the handle. I've got the handle right here. So we can install our handle and we're good to go. It's pretty awesome. Thanks Sliger for sending over the case. I, uh, I was not expecting to like it as much as I do. Their, their website really doesn't do justice to how well built and how solid these cases are. I mean, it makes sense because, you know, I mean, that's, that's some solid construction. <laughs> you could kill a man with that side panel. Uh, but you know, that is reflected in the cost, I think. So you've got a million and one options in terms of what you build. You know, there's drive sleds. You can add drive sleds, three and a half inch drives. You can add another exhaust fan here at the top. Assuming I can get the cables out of the way and it's gonna have to be slim line. But you know, dual gigabit, USB 3.0, USB 3.1, USB 3.1 Gen 2, plus onboard Wi-Fi, plus all of the other options, plus this is gonna be a home for a capture, plus I can add a discrete GPU if I want to for things like NV Ink. There's a million possibilities because there's a ton of room for activities in here and this is so much smaller. So here it is in the final installation, before on our mobile rolly cart of Insanity, and then here's after. Yeah, I did clean it up with the wire management. There is a UPS in the bottom, so we can unplug it and roll it around and do whatever we need to. This machine on the back, I mean, we've shed a lot of weight, but we've got a lot more functionality. And we could add another Magewell card later, save up for a few months and, and pick up another Magewell. The reason that it would be nice to have another Magewell is for live streams, because you could have two camera angles and switch between them. The Epifan will work for now, it's 4K 30 as opposed to you know 4K 60. And for live streaming, like 1080p 60 is probably a better choice than 4K 60. But we like to record while we're streaming, just in case we use that footage or something else for that later. I'd like to get to the point where we could do some live productions where like we have an intro, like we can do the pre-roll live and some of the other stuff, but I can save the original high quality footage in 4K so that we could edit it together to be a shorter video. So like if I'm doing a lab video and we're just messing around on the live stream for a couple hours on a lab, I'd like to take those two or three hours of footage from two, at least two, maybe three different camera angles, the one above. I could live with the, the, the above camera being 4K 30 and then be able to edit that down and post, you know, in case it's on a live stream, in case we do a live stream to like float plane or something like that. I don't know, but this build turned out really well. So good job, Sliger. Nicely done. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out, and we'll catch you later.